I want to know what you mean by a piece of life. Because uh, what you drink is life, what you eat is life, what you breathe is life. All this we are gathering and this is a piece of life, which has acquired a certain level of information, built its own kind of software unconsciously and its own tendencies and its own character and its own personality, but that's a bubble. It's like if you blow soap bubbles, each bubble has a character of its own. When the burst, the most essential ingredient of the bubble was the air, where is it? It's all there. So this is all air and the bubble is a piece of air. Similarly, this is all life. This whole cosmos is a living cosmos. Holy Here shit. I'm a piece of life. And I have… this is… life has given me this privilege that I can hold this piece of life within myself and experience it as if I am by myself everything. It's a fantastic privilege, but we should not abuse this. <laughs> and, and do you see that as being illusory, the idea that you're a piece of life and I'm a piece of life, given that we share atoms and when I'm breathing out and you're breathing in and so on, we're exchanging atoms, do you… do you… Do you see that as an illusion that there is a you and a me or is that… are we all the same um, life? See, the thing is right now, uh, you know, all these apps have come and different kinds of softwares have come. So this is easy to understand today because people are using this thing all as if they're alive, okay? And they're alive in their own way because a certain amount of information has been calibrated in a certain way to do certain things Whoa. and it's mm. almost alive. I think m most people have a better relationship with their WhatsApp with than with their family, <laughs> okay? <laughs> yes, people are wah, so wah, wah. engaged with it because it has a character of its own and it's even predicting what's the next word you will type. That's a cool way of thinking about life. Life is just a gathering of certain information that can do things in a certain way. An insect, a molecule of air, even your phone. That's crazy to be like technology in a certain sense is life. Holy shit. Holy shit. This is just like that. It has accumulated a certain amount of information. This vast life that's available, around it we formed a bubble. This is my bubble, that's your bubble. What is the content of the bubble? It's the same stuff. But what is the surface of the bubble? My surface is entirely different from yours. And it has its own characteristic, it has its own flavor, it has its own tendencies. So this is an unconscious software that every one of us is building with phenomenal amount of information that we are acquiring as we sit here. I think I've been wondering this whole video, just curiously, what David did afterwards. I just thought that when he was explaining this stuff. I guess I, I had this whole assumption going on in my head that I'm just realizing of like he goes home to his wife, assuming he has a wife. Bad assumption. He goes, he goes wherever he goes, talks to people about this or experience, like thinks about it in himself. What is that like? What does that, does a conversation with Sadhguru open a door? Maybe a little peephole. I, I don't know. I would think that there's no way to look at, if you're a scientist and you have this talk. Yeah. No way to look at your daily work. You couldn't look at it the same. Yes. The five senses are gathering a phenomenal amount of… the amount of information that one gathers in twenty-four hours of time. If you spend a million years, you can't process it. That much information we are gathering. This is what traditionally we refer to as karma. It's all twisted out in America, I'm seeing the word karma. Everybody's calling themselves karma now. You know, people are named karma. I heard uh, some people were named karma. <laughs> so we will… suppose we see right now the… we don't know how the outside weather also is quite good I think in the evening, at least the air conditioning is good, everything is nice, uh, you're fine. 
Every, nobody's troubling you here, but you're sitting here miserably. Then we say, ayo, it says karma. What it means is, the word karma literally translates as action or doing. So we say, who you are right now is entirely your doing. The way you have structured yourself, knowingly or unknowingly, the kind of… Something came to me the other day uh, in conversation at dinner. I don't think you were there. So I'm not invited. Yeah, no, you weren't invited. He lives with us. He's uh, He eats dinner in the basement. Put it in my himself. dog, my dog tray. Oh, we're back. Yeah. <laughs> back to that. All right. It's in the future, though. It's, it's still it's coming. It's in the future. Okay. Uh, you didn't understand any of that, but that's fine. Uh, maybe but someday. <laughs> maybe someday. But it came to me that uh, if you have the deepest perception of karma, then there is no room for judgment. Hmm. Womb that you were born in is also an unconscious choice because you created a certain type of tendencies. That's where you moved in search of that kind of tendencies. What? Hold up, hold up. Let's rewind that yes. a few seconds. <laughs> the way you have structured yourself, knowingly or unknowingly, the kind of womb that you were born in is also an unconscious choice because you created a certain type of tendencies. That's where you moved. In search of that. Yogananda said he was conscious in his mother's womb, chose to become incarnate as a human. That one will get you. <laughs> Mind is mush! <laughs> yes! <laughs> We're setting a record right now of time spent reacting. We're at. What are we at? Over two hours and ten minutes. Yes. In one session. Yes. And we're still going. Mind is... Kind of tendencies. What... what facilitates that? So this software is building up all the time unconsciously. So only thing that I want to say now is, whatever you can do unconsciously, if you are willing, if you are willing, you can do the same thing consciously. Because this is very important, if you want to be a, a unique fresh bubble, of your own, then you must distance your from yourself from genetic memory, otherwise you will see at eighteen you're a great rebel, you don't want to be like your parents and this and that. Mm. You see when you're forty-five, suddenly you start walking like your father, talking <laughs> like your mother. <laughs> Stuff is happening to you, you don't know because Holy don't underestimate these people <laughs> They won't give up so easily. Your grandfather may be dead and gone, but the guy wants to live through you. Ah. So the thing is, to distance yourself from ge genetic memory so that you don't become a cyclical pattern of repetitiveness, mm. you want to be a fresh life. That means you have to recalibrate your software consciously. I'm, I gotta give a stamp of approval to anything that can be done unconsciously can be done consciously. Yeah, 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 huh. yeah, yeah. Huh. I'm just stoked about how much of this is landing with me now and how little of it would have landed me with me with past Mitch. This is, some of you have pointed this out actually, which brought it to my attention, that if you were watching our earlier reactions versus now, the amount of things that we are picking up on mm. because of the way that we've been processing this information and putting it into play in our lives like has completely changed yeah i don't know if i haven't put a lot of thought into how much externally we feel different reacting yeah. that'd be cool if you were to let us know that's what this but, comment was saying but exactly yeah. that that's really intriguing to me because i know how much internal mm. shift there has and it is it is like a the me that was there is just not here. It's just like... And the us that's there is not here, you know? It's like... Crazy. It's it, it just, just feels like I am not even doing the same thing that I would do when I would go to react to Sad Guru six months ago. It feels like a different event. Because of the approach and the under, I guess the understanding, the knowing mm. that has changed. And the 
I don't even know. The willingness to explore, whatever it is. Whatever it is, we don't even need to say it. You know what we're talking about. Anything that you can do consciously, you can also do... Anything that you can do unconsciously, you can also do consciously, if the necessary striving is there. What does it take for people to have that level of striving? Uh-oh. It depends how far they want to go. If you, if somebody comes and asks, uh-oh, you ready? You ready? This, this you ready? is, this is when David Eagleman's yogic career begins. Yeah, right. No, that's. Th- this was like. I feel like that is. <laughs> so the, what does it take? <laughs> I feel like that's the the question. Like that I've. I wouldn't say I've been waiting for a question, but like this is the question I've been kind of like. Well, what are we gonna get there? Of, of the. I don't. I don't think he's necessarily like at the point of like I accept Sadhguru as a teacher. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. it's more like that's how I view it. Let is, me explore what this could even mean. Yes, and and but but it's le- it's like he it's almost like a stopping of the the questioning, and it's like okay, you're saying all these things. Yeah. David's humble enough to mm. not mm. have to refute at Shout this point David. all the things he's saying. He's like okay. I don't know if this is true or not. Sure, I'm skeptical. How do you get there? Because Sadhguru, he's listened to him enough at this point where he knows that Sadhguru is not just talking out of his ass. Yeah. You know? There's some real shit here. And he's only talking from knowing. And so it's like, where do you go from there? It's like, Mm. well, how the hell did you get to where you're at? And the cool thing about yoga, it's like, try it. Yeah. If it doesn't work, stop trying it, mm-hmm. but it'll work, you know? Same thing with Buddhism that I love. Yeah, like, yeah, question yeah. Question it, do it. Right. And that's like... You have nothing to gain. <laughs> exactly, exactly. I... That is like the coolest part. There was a thing, we watched the documentary on Yogananda the other day, and it was someone was asking him about desire, and they were about to become like, a disciple or something mm. and he was like have your desires for food for sex for money fine have them but when i'm done with you i can't promise that they'll still be there Woo! that's just like that's like hey just be yourself be skeptical but try it it's like try it and don't take my word for anything. That's what's like attracted me so much to the yogic science is don't take my word for anything. Mm. Go outside, go try it, mm. come back, tell me how you feel. Yeah. We ready? Yeah. If I want to know the entire, not the new physics, what has happened till now, if I want to know, how long does it take? If a fresh student comes and asks, is there a time you can say? No, you can say, okay, start on a science uh, undergrad, let's see. If he does undergrad and he thinks he's beginning to know everything, then you start telling him, this is not it, you've got to do your math. If he does that, you will say, then you have to do your PhD. After your PhD, you're declared that you don't know much <laughs> That's right, that's the path of wisdom in so, science. The, most, a the most basic thing that one can do, how long does it take? The most fundamental thing is, first of all, to know that there is another dimension of faculty within us, that there's another way of perceiving things, that there is something beyond, not as a belief, not as a conclusion, not as something that is said in some scripture or by some guru or some teacher or whatever, but by yourself to know beyond this body, beyond this mind, there is something within you. This experience, if this has to happen, I would say if you are willing to dedicate just thirty hours of absolutely focused time, if you give me, in thirty hours' time, we can bring you to a place, we can give you a tool through which you know something beyond your physicality. What that thing is, you don't have to jump into a conclusion, but something you beyond your physical nature will become alive within you and you know there is something beyond physical nature. If that is enough inspiration for you to continue your pursuit, then how long it will take the entire pursuit, you cannot say each individual is his own. They're saying enough. Ah, okay. <laughs> I, have a, <laughs> I have a message that we're going to go to Q&A now. 
Oh. Uh, oh. And Trent, is there a discount science from mysticism or mysticism from science? But uh, what I want to, uh, through this discussion, what I had been thinking about is, uh, as you say, you observe, how can I, uh, I have a question for David first, have you ever studied someone uh, who's observed themselves from outside, like uh, suspending yourself from within you and observing you? And to Sadhguru, what would be the best te technique to achieve that level mm. of human intelligence that you suspend yourself out of yourself and observe yourself? So it depends exactly what we mean by observing yourself from the outside. There is um, what's called an out-of-body illusion that people can have. It's a, it's a little complicated to, illusion. <laughs> to explain the setup, but it has to do with wearing some video goggles and putting a camera behind you. And so you're now seeing your body with your goggles. You're seeing your own body there. And That's a trip. <laughs> um, uh, you know, somebody... Scratches your uh, back, and uh, and you can see your back getting scratched over there, and you're feeling it also. But you're seeing your own body at a distance, and this allows people to sometimes have a very clear experience where their body is there, but they feel like I am six feet behind over here. So uh, wow. there's a neuroscience group in Europe that, that was crazy. able to induce this illusion when people were even lying down, and they, that gave them the opportunity to stick them into a brain scanner and measure brain activity while they were having this out-of-body experience and thought they were six feet away from their body. Brain imaging is limited in the sense that what we can say is, well, there are particular sets of Christmas lights that light up when you're having that kind of experience, but unfortunately, that's where science gets a little bit stuck because we can describe the neural correlates of subjective experience, mm -hmm. but we don't know yet why they're identical to that subjective experience. So the answer to your question is it has been measured, but the answer is not satisfying. All instruments created by us are definitely lesser instruments than this one. Ay, 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 ay. Though a telephone can speak that far That's and I tasty. can only speak this far, all this, but they are lesser instruments in terms of sophistication. In terms of a particular action, they may be bigger than us. A bicycle can go run faster than I can run, a motorcycle can go much faster, well, there is an aircraft which can fly. Yes, all that is there. But in terms of sophistication, there cannot be anything more sophisticated than who we are because we cannot create something more sophisticated than ourselves. Whatever we create will be a byproduct of who we are. So in that context, using instruments to... Brings it to the idea of like creating robots that are like humans. I've been thinking about that. It was, it was a lot a while ago. Oh, wow. But just the, the idea of like trying to recreate a person. Oh. This was how... This, this is what brought me here. Is I was... I had hurt my ankle. Yes. And I was like just focusing on it, trying to like feel into the pain or whatever, mm -hmm. see how it heals and was nice feeling like feeling like the healing was coming from outside of my foot in mm. a certain way, like surrounding it almost. Mm. But it was, it was something where I was like, I don't know if this is just the way it feels or whatever, but then it just made me think of how this machine heals itself on such minuscule levels that uh, we could just not perceive. Then the big machine, Earth, regenerates is... itself. And then, and then you think about like building a robot and being like, oh yeah, like our robots are getting close to like being like humans. Cause they can like do backflips and stuff, which is like, whoa, that's crazy. But like, yeah. Nothing more needs to be said. Yeah. Such a similar thing happened to me with my hand. I don't know if, how many of you know. I like sliced my hand open, got stitches. Such a similar Sharp thing. Sharp knife, and he didn't know how to hold it. Right, child. <laughs> uh, but similar thing with your ankle. I was like, that was what I was trying to do throughout the process. Mm. And there is, it's like every time I would do breath work and just like random other times, I'd feel, you know, the normal uplifting of sensation in my whole body. But mostly here, 
Mm. That was so fascinating all the time is that like my body was sending energy to this spot so it could heal so that my my functions can go properly. Yeah. It's amazing. Like the, my body is so smart, it's so intelligent. Mm. It, no, my body is so smart. No, my <laughs> <laughs> Uh, measure yes you can you can very easily fool the brain you know it's uh, it's very simple there are many many techniques like this in yoga like uh, uh, i mean david is talking about uh, he was talking to me about how you could trick the mind that a smell can become a sound a sound can become something else the whole lot of without all these gadgets there are many ways that you could trick the human mind and uh, the magicians of the world have mastered this thing, you know, simply like this, they pick things out of your pocket without you knowing what's happening to you. Uh, because there is a certain way that you can use the faculty to go behind that and do certain things. That apart, mm. in terms of fundamental sophistication, there is nothing more sophisticated than this gadget. This is the gadget and this is the only form of experience you have with the world. When I say this is the only form of experience you have, Right now, can you see me, all of you? Just use your hands and point out, where am I? Oh, you got it all wrong. You know, I'm a… I'm a mystic from South India. <laughs> now, this light is falling upon me, reflecting, inverted image in the retina. You know the whole story. Where do you see me now? Within yourself. Where do you hear me now? Within yourself. Where have you seen the whole world? Within yourself. Everything that ever happened to you, happen only within you. Right now, someone next to you, if they touch your hand, you think you're feeling their hand. No, you're only experiencing the sensations in your hand. You do one thing, you make somebody touch you like this five times, just observe this. After that, no hand, that person is not here, simply sit here. You can create the same sensation. Either you can do it with external stimuli or you can internally manufacture anything that you want. What you call… Just make someone make you happy five times and then just create the same emotion. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> As mental uh, problems or mental diseases is just that, they're creating many things without external stimuli. All the time it's happening. It's happening to everybody in so many different ways. When it goes out of control, we call it an ailment. Otherwise, almost every human being is various experiences they are creating without any external stimuli. If you go through your dream, a dream is as true as a reality when you're going through it, isn't it? I was… Uh, you know, we started a school a few years ago and this eight-year-old boy, I just walked into the school, this eight-year-old boy comes and asks, Sadhguru, is life real or is it a dream? I look at him. <laughs> This is an eight-year-old, you have to come with the truth, you know. <laughs> I said, life is a dream, but dream is true. Go, Sadhguru, you're always like this only. Oh. <laughs> but that's a fact. Wow. Life is a dream. The way it's happening within you right now, it's a dream. But come on! Life is a dream, but dream is true. Universal <laughs> bars from range. <laughs> yeah, 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 Dude, that's gonna be. I am gonna. Mm. I'm gonna universally bar stamp that like yeah. above where I sleep or some shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh huh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. You get a hit of that. <laughs> But the dream is true in your experience. But this dream, you can make it whichever way you want, whichever way you want, in the sense… <laughs> okay, I'm not sure. In the sense what? <laughs> <laughs> On a certain day, a lady went to sleep. In her sleep, she had a dream. In her dream, she saw a hunk of a man standing there staring at her. Then he started coming closer and closer and closer. He came so close, she could even feel his breath. And she trembled, not in fear <laughs> Then she asked, what will you do to me? The man said, well lady, it's your dream 
If you want to say something, please. <laughs> so, it's your dream, you can make whatever out of it and we can make this into a fantastic dream for ourselves and for everybody on this planet. Science and technology has done wonderful things for us to enhance our dreams. But I want the scientists to meditate. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. We've done it. Thank goodness that weirdo's over with. We don't have to listen to him again. That's how I feel every time I get to finally leave Mitch after these reactions. Shit. <laughs> bah, 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 bah. Yeah, they got me. <laughs> Until we live together, then it gets <clears throat> difficult. We always have lived together when doing the reactions. That's a good point. Yes. I loved it. It was a lot. I hated it. It was a lot. Any suggestions of more videos like this? We like going deep. Yeah. With you. The conversations are just like juicy because you just get the flavor of the other person that adds new flavor to sad girl. Mm -hmm. Very mm -hmm. good. Much love. Much love. <laughs>